Communication is the foundation of strong, meaningful relationships. When people can't communicate. Whether it is because they can't take information in. Or can't get information out. They can be isolated. Trapped. Alone. Confused. And frustrated. The Callier Center for Communication Disorders at the University of Texas at Dallas How people can begin throughout their life. I know I'm only five, but here's what I learned about life. Tell it like it is. Say what you mean. I mean what you said. Think before you speak. Don't be a blabbermouth. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Share your popsicle. Don't talk with your mouth full. Watch your language. Actions speak louder than words. But words can pack a punch. Go ahead, people. Say you're sorry. And mean it. Listen! Don't interrupt. Always tell the truth. Be nice. Because I said so. For the past 30 years, the Callier Center has provided intervention programming for individuals on the autism spectrum. According to the CDC, our current prevalence rate of autism or autism spectrum disorder is 1 in 68 children. And boys outnumber girls, approximately 4 to 5 boys for every one girl. Children who exhibit autism are going to have difficulty learning to speak. Some of them do not speak at all. Parents will find that their children almost seem to be incapable of interacting with them. Often they'll say that they seem like they don't like to be around other people. It is a spectrum. So on one end of the spectrum, you may see a child who's completely nonverbal, doesn't respond to their name, they're not looking at you. On the other end, you may see a child who kind of going to fly under the radar at school in terms of their language is good, but there's little social communication deficits that are not picked up on. So they may not be able to maintain a conversation, or they may just be very restricted with what their interests are. The preverbal program was the first program designed for children with autism in 1985. Our major goal is to establish social communicative abilities in the children so that they become interested in social interaction and communication. We began our programming with children 18 months or even younger. The parents may not even know that the child has autism at that point. What the parents know is that the children are not learning to talk. We bring in the families and the children and we develop an individualized treatment that allows us to both study the child's interactive behaviors and communication and provide early intervention to them. A lot of children in the pre-verbal program may be nonverbal completely, so they're not talking yet. If they do have language, they have a lot of labels, so a ball, a cup, their snack that they like. When we start to notice that social piece, I want to talk to this adult, I want to talk with other kids, I just don't know how, that's when we start to take a look to see if they need to be in early class. Uh -oh. The early class actually stands for Early Communication, Language, and Social Skills. And it's a classroom-based program for kids on the autism spectrum from ages two and a half to around five. We use a lot of visual strategies to support language growth and comprehension. Oink, oink. We like to bring in kids and take what we know about them and we develop our treatment plans on an individualized basis. The graduate students are a very important part of our program because they're assigned to each of our patients and it's in at least a one-to-one -one ratio. And they are in charge of that patient's case management under my supervision. So they learn how to implement language therapy, increase play skills, and they also learn how to assess speech and language and then they also have that component of report writing, so they're learning the professional part of being a speech language pathologist. A lot of people don't know that UTD is the largest communication disorders master's program in the country, and they are ranked among the top 5% of those programs in the country. Through our work and through the help of the skills that Callier and UTD has taught me, I've been able to help these kids be able to express themselves, be able to ask can I have a drink and I would like to play with you. 
Good job. These are fundamental communication skills that we normally take for granted. And here at Callier, we are helping give these children these skills to take out into the world. We first noticed uh, issues with uh, Sydney's development um, when she was in her first year. So she, she started to get behind on some of her developmental milestones. We noticed around 10, 11 months or so that she would have these periods where she would kind of zone out and it was like we weren't there. So Sydney was mostly nonverbal at that point, uh, didn't want to interact with other children, um, frankly didn't even act as if other children existed. The Collier Center has helped Sydney in, I think, a lot of different ways. I think the fact that they have the one-on-one -on -one with a grad student is huge. They're introducing, you know, kids that maybe don't want to have a whole lot to do with other kids. They're finding ways to, to get them together and, and to interact. Collier has, has helped us have a relationship with her as well, because obviously if she wouldn't play with others, she wouldn't play with us either, and, and that's kind of opened up the, the after to her to where she's now playing with us and, and interacting with us and, and coming up to us and uh, requesting things and having a conversation on her level with us. If we've seen other children grow alongside of Sydney through this process at the Callier Center, and watching the level of interaction uh, shows me that they're laying a foundation for how these kids can survive and thrive in the, in the world that we all live in. All of this work in, in, in therapy that uh, Collier's doing with, with Sydney is, is a lot of heavy work and, and meaty work, but, but for Sydney it's just play and that's a normal day for her. To watch my child play and interact with other kids, I can't describe really how much that's, that's meant. And I think that is a direct result of, of her experiences at the Collier Center. I think hopes and dreams for her is that she lives a fulfilled life. Robots for Autism is a robot that delivers um, social skills curriculum to children with autism. Hey, hey, look. Teacher's face. What makes it unique is that the robot is engaging. He's technology and children are fascinated by technology. The way that we created him with a slower voice. We're going to learn about saying hi to friends today with visual support. This is called greeting. And very simple language describing different social skills. Smile and say hi. As the children are engaged and they have the different repetition, they're learning and they're learning in ways that they're not learning with another human being. The goal of my research is to understand why some children engage more with Milo than other children, and what are the factors that can help children engage with Milo. Cole is a 14-year-old child with autism. What you see in this video is that first he's looking at Danielle, and now he's not. He's looking away, but he's still very, very compliant, but he's not paying any attention to her. So now here's Cole with Milo. He's completely engaged. Milo says something, and he says, yeah, and he moves in closer, and he never looks away. Engagement is learning. And what's so neat about Milo is he can repeat the same lesson over and over and over again, as many times as that child needs it. And he never gets frustrated, he never gets upset. He just can, does it in the same calm way. So the goal is not to interact with Milo forever. It's to interact with humans, to take those lessons and bring them into the real world. Thank you for listening. I hope you will help us change the world and truly improve the lives of children with autism. Thank you. Thank you.